chemical engineering interview at Cambridge coming right up. Hey there, welcome to ChemEng Weekly. To start off with, chemical engineering interviews at Cambridge are not all the same, with many variations seen between the colleges you're applying to and the pathways you're taking to do chemical engineering, which is why this video will try to address all the different aspects of a Cambridge ChemEng interview. This video will be split up into three key sections. The first section showing you playlists for useful videos based off which pathway you're taking, either via natural sciences or via engineering. The second section will be down to the formatting and the third section will be general advice. Before we get into it, I strongly recommend that you watch the technical interview questions video that I put up earlier this year. So without further ado, let's get right into it. First of all, the pathway. So when applying for chemical engineering at Cambridge, there are two main pathways that you can take either chemical engineering via natural sciences or chemical engineering via engineering. As a result of this, the first year of your course at Cambridge is spent either studying natural sciences or engineering, which means the interviews you'll have will be much more of this nature. To help with this respect, I've put together two playlists, one called ChemEng via Natsuki and the other one called ChemEng via Engineering to help you out with these general interviews and what sort of things you should expect. These playlists are found in the iCard section above as well as the description below, so make sure you check them out. Generally speaking, the ChemEng interview at Cambridge does not tend to differ too much from a natural sciences or an engineering interview, apart from a couple of key sections, which may or may not change and may not always apply. Within the playlist's videos, you have a good indication of what sorts of things you can expect, as well as some mock interviews, what sort of things you should prepare for, and more. One key thing to remember about doing a natural sciences interview is that you need to know which pathways and modules you are looking to take in your first year. This is because Cambridge offers many different modules which can be found on the Cambridge Natural Sciences website and you need to know which ones you're taking specifically because it shows that you have researched into your subject. Chemical engineering applicants usually take maths pathway A or pathway B, again more information is available on the Cambridge website, as well as physics, chemistry and material sciences. However, it's not uncommon for them to take biology as well, given how the department is the chemical engineering and biotechnology department at Cambridge. This does not apply to the engineering interview because the engineering faculty does not have such divides. Section two, the formatting. Given how Cambridge, like other universities, has shifted its interviews online in light of the pandemic for the past two years, the format may change depending on how much time availability they have. After having a conversation with a recent graduate from the University of Cambridge, who saw both the in-person interviews and helped applicants through the online interview phases, he mentioned the following. With regards to in-person interviews, there would usually be two interviews, the first one with the Director of Studies for Chemical Engineering at the college, as well as the Director of Studies for Natural Sciences at the college you're applying for. He said that in this interview, they focused very briefly on your personal statement and then moved more onto chemical engineering basics without any prior knowledge. He said that this interview was mainly to test your response to chemical engineering as well as natural sciences in general and show how you would automatically adapt or not adapt to some new concepts thrown at you. And he also said there was a second interview in which they tested the interview knowledge that you should already attain. He said he was tested by his two college chemistry professors. He also said that this interview tested more the technical applications of your knowledge rather than asking more soft skill questions. And he reported that of the candidates he helped, the virtual interview was more like the second set of interviews rather than the first and that the majority, if not all of the candidates, had only one interview. He also said that the format of the questions asked at the interview were very problem-based, and they were trying to evaluate how well the candidate could problem-solve. As a result, he said, there was much more integration of different topics across subjects, such as maths and chemistry, and for those that had studied it, physics as well. Another successful candidate at Cambridge reported that in engineering interviews, it was much like what they describe in the videos I've put in the playlist, so it's best to go and check those out in that respect. They did also report that, much like the first graduate, their first interview was also with the Director of Studies, so that's a common factor between both of these interviews, should you have two. And of course, they said you should only focus on the interview style for the pathway you've chosen, so there's not much point revising the general engineering pathway interview routes if you've applied via natural sciences and vice versa. Both candidates did, however, report that the majority of the questions they asked stemmed from something they included in their SAQ and very rarely deviated from something they hadn't learnt yet so it would be very worthwhile to go over your SAQ and revise those subjects thoroughly because that's the pool from which they will be asking questions. This is done for fairness reasons so that candidates actually know what could possibly come up rather than having to pick up from different places where they've been taught. They also said there was much benefit in doing mock interviews before your actual interview, especially with the science teacher for example, 
because this would prepare you for the sort of questions they would ask generally in the virtual interview as well as the second interview if it was in person. They said that questions focusing on synoptic links between maths, further maths, chemistry and sometimes physics would be the best, depending on if you've studied this particular pathway or not. But they definitely advise that you should know everything you've put in your SAQ, especially for chemistry and maths if you've chosen natural sciences, or for physics and maths if you've chosen engineering route. They did hasten to add that although the SAQ forms the basis of the things they can ask you, sometimes they do guess into what other topics you may have learnt based off what you've already put down, so it's not unexpected to be asked a topic that you haven't yet studied in class, although they do accept that you may struggle through it. The advice they wanted to pass on was that although you've not come across the subject they're talking about if it's new or have not yet studied it, still try and make a good attempt and explain how you think you'd go about doing it. However, it's very important that you do not go out of your way to learn new stuff you not put on your SAQ. And finally, general tips. So in general, it's important to remember that a Cambridge interview mainly focuses on whether a candidate is a good fit for Cambridge and the way they teach. They want to explore how teachable you are and whether you can fit into the supervision style of teaching. As a result, they want to hear you think out loud and for you to keep communicating with them and making them feel engaged, which is especially important if your interview is online, because sometimes being in a different room to your interviewer may feel like they're disconnected, but you want to make sure that they are constantly hearing what you're thinking and actively engaged within your interview. Don't worry about trying to get every single question right, that's not the purpose of the interview. The interview is to try and see how teachable you are and how much of an improvement you can make once you understand something is wrong and what approaches you take to solve it. If you ever feel like you're stuck at any point in the interview, don't go silent. Just state out loud what you think the best way to do the problem would be, and it will be down to the interviewer to correct you and put you in the right direction. You should positively respond to their prompts and don't take it too personally, because ultimately they want to help you succeed and they want to see if their way of doing it will fit for you. So the best general advice I can give based off the candidates and graduates I've spoken to regarding Cambridge interviews is you should be assured of what your SAQ included, and you should do a couple of mock interviews based on either the first interview format style or the second one, or maybe even both. And you should try to remain calm. You should keep trying and keep throwing out new ideas. And with those tips, you should be in for a good interview. As a final mentioning note, you should use the same resources to prepare for the Cambridge interview as you have for the other interviews you may or may not have had. And I've listed these resources in the Imperial interview video, so you should check them out. You can practice your maths of Physics and Maths Tutor as well as alevelmaths.com as well as practicing your chemistry from Isaac Chemistry, Physics and Maths Tutor once again and iwanttostudyengineering.com Another final resource that would be useful for preparing for the problem solving aspect of the Chemical Engineering Cambridge interview would be a book called Professor Povey's Perplexing Problems which is mainly focused on maths and mechanics as well as a number of different subcategories within these subjects and they often do like to use these style of questions so it could be a good practice set of questions to get to grips to, with what they might ask you. And that's it, with that comes the end of the video. For those of you preparing for the Cambridge Chemical Engineering interview I wish you the best of luck. Thank you for watching the video, be sure to like it if you enjoyed it and leave your comments and suggestions down in the comments section below. Don't forget to follow us on our social media channels, and if you click here or here, you can watch another one of our videos. Click up here to subscribe, and thank you very much.